Happy October, my Aquarius Seekers. How are you doing? How was your September? So, um, fun thing, on October 10th, I'm doing a live q and It's my first live chat. Uh, so I'm super excited to, you know, to hang out with you guys and you get to ask me questions about spirituality and energy and whatnot. And we'll just see where it leads us to. Um, I will keep you posted on the actual time. I'll probably just like um, um, pin the comment to all the videos once I know. So check in on like October 9th or something. By then I'll know for sure. Um, October. Aquarius. That was fast. Two of Cups. Good. I'm feeling upbeat. I'm feeling optimistic. Nice flow of energy. That's good. That's good, Aquarius. Let's keep that up. Okay, I want to see what it's about, though. Is this a partnership? I mean, I know the painting and the meaning leads us automatically to love. But the Two of Cups can mean so many things. Uh, I like that when I put the card close, then the light comes much better. Hmm. I want to try something. Eight of Swords, by the way. Sorry. Let me see if I do this. Um, is better light like that? I don't know. Let's try. Yeah, I feel like that's better. Um, yes, in Hebrew you would say Aliyah v'kotzba. Um, it means something beautiful, but there's a thorn. It looks beautiful, but there's a thorn. There's a partnership that we are not feeling liberated in that maybe on the surface like i said in the beginning two of cups automatically seems malevolent and harmonious but eight of swords that could be very inner so maybe something that on the outside might seem or supposed to feel really good but then the inside feels a little bit i don't want to use the word oppressive that sounds a bit too extreme although it might resonate with some of you but Okay, love is supposed to make us feel exhilarated and not Disney type, um, constantly euphoric. It's not what I'm talking about. Love is real, it's real life. But on the inside, we're supposed to feel like our, our being is being expanded in a, in a positive way, in a lighthearted way, where we wake up in the morning and we're happy. Okay, even though life could be challenging, we're still in a place that is content. And if something inside of us does not feel content, then something is missing. Something is lacking. Um, there's also the the vice the the oppos the opposition, a different option where it's almost like a 180 different where everything is great and we can feel great, but we're stuck in our head. The Eight of Swords kind of thing of is this what I want for myself a happy content partnership is this how I see myself in the future is this it is there anything else to it it's the um, oh, there's a phrase to that uh, symptom syndrome where Everything is good, everything is happy, everything is satisfied, but something in us feel, feels itchy. It's not always right or intuitive. Sometimes it's fear-oriented, aka PTSD, like muscle memory. Say you've had a troubled life, went through a lot of challenges, a lot of you know um, um, difficult circumstances, and your body remembers. Your body remembers. It's a constant level of stress, right? And being ready to battle. Um, except that there's no enemy and there's no reason, nothing to battle. <laughs> um, but the body and, and, and the subconscious is, is in battle mode. So it's this constant itch. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is going to get messed up. Something doesn't necessarily have to be reality. So maybe it's the opposite of what I started with. Again, this is, these are general readings. Many of you are watching. So take it as you know what's yours, right? You know what's yours, the secret. Um, so maybe you just find it hard to be happy in a happy situation because 
your body remembers and you're scared that it will return. And sometimes we don't know the difference. Very, very hard to tell the difference between our fears and our intuition, between our hopes and our, our wishful thinking and our intuition, because everything is in the stomach. I spoke about it before. I don't remember in which video, but I feel it will be good to, re, um, uh, to talk about it again. Um, our fears, our hopes, and our gut and our intuition all lies in the same place which makes us be lied to many times we don't know am i what is what i'm feeling now true danger am i sensing true danger or is it just my ptsd or fear or anxiety um, and past uh conditioning um and what i'm feeling right now is really positive and i know something great is happening or it's just my wishful thinking and my tendency to get lost a little bit in, in la la land it happens to all of us okay um or is what i'm feeling actual um i'm actually sensing i'm actually tapping the way to know is by trial and error <laughs> usually intuition I mean, with me, it's different because me, for example, I, I bet it varies between different people. But for me, for example, when something is off, I get itchy, not necessarily like this itchy, but I feel discomfort in a place. I, I can't sleep well. I, um, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel like I can do whatever I want whenever I want. Something is wrong. Something is off, right? Um, that's my way of knowing something is off as opposed to if mentally I'm just thinking it okay but other people it's different say you've experienced a physical trauma then your body might always constantly be in battle mode and that not necessarily truthful to you so i don't feel like there's the right and wrong in this um it, it's some it has to do you have to go about it um in a way of your trial and error like you need to experience yourself so a good technique that i can give you sorry i know i'm a little bit uh, drifting away from the reading but it's relevant and some of you can make good of it um every time you have an intuitive hunch and you're not sure which one it is of the three intuition hope fear write it down write exactly how you felt what made you feel that way it, um define the physical emo um sensation the cognitive sensation and the emotional sensation um, and then wait and wait it out, see what actually happens, um, and then write what happened. And then after a while, go back to it and see the connection. What was an actual intuition and what were the guidelines of how you felt, how it came to you, etc. Um, intuition is a quiet knowing. It's like... You, your name, your date of birth, the color of your hair, the color of your eyes. Um, these are things you breathe. Um, you blink. These are things you don't think about. You just, they just exist in you, right? So intuition is something that you just know, that you don't have to question or ask or um, wonder about. It's just inner knowing whether the circumstances around you support that or not. Um, that's the best I can give you when it comes to how to differentiate between the three. Um, but I feel like that exercise could be very, very good if you find yourself confused between the options. Okay, so let's see more. Okay, we have two of cups, eight of swords. You know, sometimes it's just a superficial um, interpretation of the cards. Sometimes there's lack of trust, the combination of two of cups and eight of swords. There's someone mistrust someone someone might have feelings for someone else thinking outside maybe have something to hide maybe they're lying now i don't want you to take it automatically to oh my spouse is cheating on me please it's not what i'm telling you and this is not what tarot readings are about and it's definitely not what i'm here for i'm not here to stir drama um and gossip oriented readings it's not my thing we're here to expand and grow spiritually okay um so i always try to give you the the lesson that the cards speak of and the advice but yes it could mean that mostly when it comes to my readings because i don't like to go into someone else's inner core uh, without their permission but you're here so i have your permission to go inside your core right because you're watching um so maybe it's you that is thinking out that has thoughts that you feel guilty about 
because everything is so great. So why am I thinking about someone else? Why do I want something else? This whole shame, guilt thing that we have going on in our society when it comes to our emotions and our desires, it's really bad, bad, bad for us. The heart is the only thing that's real. Okay, when we fall in love, we, it, it, our soul basically is leading us to a place where we can expand there and grow in and that's where we need to be for that time being some for a reason some for a season some for a lifetime whatever um but we don't know it until it ends if it ends because if we had known before that then we wouldn't have gone into the experience that it's going to you know if we'd known it's going to end um but if you're in love and you're there you have something to have there and once it's done and you feel something towards someone else then your soul is calling you for another for the next lesson for the next ex expansion this is not to say that you're constantly having have to change partners or jobs or careers it just means that you need to be in tune with your heart and your soul and not judge yourself because maybe there's your heart is just calling you to somewhere else something else and judging ourselves is is just the worst thing you can do for your um for your evolution seriously we live we learn Okay, we learn so much about ourselves through the eyes of the people in front of us, through our partners, our friends, our co-workers. Um, you know, we're here, we're here to heal each other and to teach each other. Um, so be grateful. If something ends in your heart, be grateful for the individual that you've loved. It was real. It wasn't a lie. It's just it was real for that time being. Who did I say it towards? It was a Pisces. So maybe watch Pisces. Pisces are feeling something similar. Um, I just don't think it's a romantic thing as much as it like a spiritual energetic faith kind of thing with them. Um, yeah, your heart can change. It's okay. It means that you've learned what you had to learn. Now let's go. Sometimes, sometimes if it's relevant to you, then take it. If not, leave it. This is, by the way, speaking of it's relevant for sun, moon, rising, Venus, any aspect that you're... Um, resonating with normally you can watch all of the more of your um natal chart um placements to get a broader picture um i also recommend going back to past readings aka if now we're doing october happy halloween uh, no this is not a costume i just like this hat uh, <laughs> if you're um if this is october then watch your september so you can make the connections right see what was what was the advice what you can learn from it um the emperor Looking straight at the Eight of Swords. Okay, two options here. Either someone is watching you when you're in a relationship and they're seeing you unhappy and they want to take control over things and kind of help you out of it, but maybe they're giving you advice, maybe they're trying to give you guidance, but you're like, you're just all in your fears and your inner anxieties or whatever it is that you're going through and you're only thinking what you have to lose and what will be and all maybe also the shaming and the guilt um so you're not you're not listening that's a b another option these two are these two okay on the surface there's the appearance of a perfect relationship but in between there's someone that feels a little bit blocked and not free and another that is always in constant control of the situation that's not healthy. This is like a master and, uh, and subordinate kind of thing. Most especially because actually you didn't see it, but it felt like this. The emperor and its upright versus the emperor and its uh, um, reverse. Very different creatures. Both power oriented, but this is healthy and balanced and leader kind of thing. And this is a dictator. Someone very jealous, very possessive, very controlling, very insecure, but very demanding. This is, you know, this is every single dictator you can think of on the news. He's power oriented. That's a lot of power struggles. That's someone trying to help and or there's an imbalance in the relationship. Someone more powerful than the other. And this one is feeling it and not happy with it. Okay, let's keep going. Because there's a lot of options. Guys, you can totally come to me for a private session if you want to look into your specific um, narrative. 
Ah, I knew I forgot something. I do a, I'm doing a special for October for my, um, for my private readings. All the information is in the, in the information box. I have special prices and I, I'm giving a, an extra service just for October for all the 10, 10, 10 on October 10th, um, doing the, I'm doing the live Q and A. Um, I'm hoping to reach 10,000 subscribers this month cause I'm closing on it. So if you haven't su subscribed yet, please pl press the subscribe button. It's a great way to support me. Thank you. And, uh, it's also that way you'll know about more videos. So yeah. Um, so inf information box, private readings there. I said it. Sorry. Okay. Let's keep going. This one fell right on the emperor, the strength card. Okay. Strong fire in this reading. The Emperor and the Strength are both fire element. Okay. Someone is really rising up to the task. Is really owning up to their power, to their energy. This one is very powerful, very much in control, very much a lion, right? And she right here She has a sense of control over the major controller. Now, maybe control is not the right word for it because it has a negative association. Maybe what I'm trying to say is this uh, quiet inner power, strength. She controls empowering the lion without force, without um, taking the lion's um, nature away from it. The lion, um, is, um, mm, the lion gives himself to her out of will. It wants to surrender to her. It trusts her. Okay, it's a willful surrender. It's 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 um, it's very trusting. And she's very angelic, very quiet. It's very inner, very serene, self assured. And look at. The difference, I mean, look at this versus this. Now, someone might be interested in an individual that is constantly powerless because it makes them feel powerful. And they're turning their back to this individual that is very empowered and self-assured just because it makes them feel like out of control or not as powerful or weak but they don't understand that that's how they're actually with that with that individual in their life that's how they're actually will be able to tap into their beast their powerful beast inside of them so there's you know with the emperor it could be someone that has this insecurity that would rather be with a weak partner because it makes them feel powerful and they will turn their back to a potential powerful partner Powerful meaning like self-assured, confident, um, quiet confidence. And if this is you and this resonates with you, you don't need that. Let them be with a weaker person that makes them feel powerful. You can get someone much better. Okay. And if this is you, Looking towards someone, you know, the uh, the helpless person. You, you want to be the hero and save. And and they're actually in a relationship and they have their own story and their, home, their own challenge and their own uh, karma and their own lessons to go through. Turn your head. Look who's right behind you. If you're a cross watcher. And this sounds like it resonates with you. Take it. Mm. What else? The justice. Yep. The right decision will be made. Um, I feel like someone might be detaching from something negative, not good for them, and leaving towards something much better. Really feeling empowered throughout October. This is also Libra season, just as the card of Libra. So I, I'm taking it to the Libra season. It, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily a Libra, though it could be, of course, but I don't like to do that in general readings. Sorry, it's just too hot in here. It's up here. Oh, 
man, I love hats, but it's hot underneath them. <laughs> so someone is owning up to their own strength and to their own power and being like, I deserve something much better. I'm leaving something that was supposed to make me happy and doesn't make me happy, or I'm helping someone leave a situation um, and kind of give them, I don't know, sanctuary. Um, but the right decision will be made. And when I say justice, it's, it's spiritual justice. I don't necessarily see in court things, although this could mean someone who's really feeling incarcerated um, and needs to be really t needs to really tap into their inner strength in order to get through this but if this is your situation october comes with liberation liberation of the self liberation physically emotionally um but it will take hard work and inner work and making decision you have to cut something out of your life with the eight of swords and the justice you have to really own up to who you are who you want to be should I say more, maybe more relevant? Because who we are is sometimes this, right? But we want to be this. To get from here to here, we have to make strong decisions and behave this way. Not hope to be, to be, be what you want to be. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded funny. Um, the justice talks about cutting through the flesh. Um, don't go cutting through anybody's flesh. Also, not through not animals' flesh, please. I would really appreciate it. If just for today, just for me, in the name of me, don't eat meat. It's better for you. Don't put that death inside of you. Speaking of, oh, it's so relevant. I'm sorry, I have to talk about it, whether you like it or not. It's just it came up for a reason. Um, the energy that we put inside our body that is what determines our strength. Okay, the fuel. If you put energy of death and misery and suffering you're really lowering your vibration, really lowering your frequency. I don't care what you think about it when it comes to the um, biological health of it, because first of all, biologically, and you can go check it out, don't don't attack me in the comments, please. It, just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not true. Okay, biologically, we're not carnivores, we're not even omnivores, we're freaking herbivores, completely vegetarian. Our, our system, what makes us apex predators is our ego and our brain, okay? We use weapons, we can't actually battle a lion with our hands. Please admit to yourself, okay? So biologically, physio, in a physical way, what your body needs is not flesh. So you're actually healthier when you're not eating all that, bah, all that death. All protein, by the way, in case you're not aware of, all protein is plant protein. The, pro the protein you receive from the animals, the animal took it from plants, okay? So you're actually sucking it in through the flesh of the animal. You might as well just take it from the source. Eat a goddamn avocado. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> um, hey, don't talk to me about survival. I haven't eaten meat in eight years. I am very strong. I train like four or five times a week. Martial artist. Don't talk to me about survival, please. Please, go check. Um, so yeah, if you want to empower yourself, a good way is to make very strong decisions about what you have, what you put in your life and what you dismiss from your life, what you put inside your body, what you dismiss from your body. Be the energy that you want to be. Okay, so many of you are seeing you guys stepping up. It will require inner strength. It will require perseverance. It will require taking control. There is someone in your life that can help you with this. So accept their help. Um, this could also be exterior individuals to trying to help this individual. Could be legal matters. Could be paperwork. Could be technical aspects. Um, but other than that, I mostly see energetic things emotional things let me know in the comments how it resonates with you guys i really read through all of them and i take to heart okay let's keep going aquarius okay those are a lot of cards i'm gonna take them i like this six of swords the sun six of cups knight of pentacles Okay, let's, this is, by the way, the Morgan Greer Tarot deck. In case you're curious, it all, I will write it down um, in the information box. Okay. Let's go 
clean this table. Okay, I'm beginning to see the extended because I already have two sixes and one, two, three, four um, major arcanas. And in the extended, in case you're new to my channel, hi, welcome. I take the numerological aspect, the rep rep repetitive numbers, and the energetic elemental aspects, for example, you know, all the major arcanas. Um, and I, and, and I rearrange the table and I give the new different narrative and kind of other points of view to it. And, and then, by the way, I clean the table, I, make, I have a new shuffle, I do a Celtic cross. Um, and then I finish up with a message from the rooms. Stay tuned, at the end I'll show you how your entire extended would look like. Um, oh, and we're also going to have messages from the Akashic Tarot, uh, new oracle that I'm using that I'm absolutely in love with because they are freaking fantastic. The Akashic Records, Akashic Library is just... You know, it's all knowledge, so I'm excited about that. Okay. Some of you are going back to either a childhood home or visiting someone that you've known for a long time. See here? It's like the same individuals, right? Same people. It's funny, I just had my best friend text me. How I'm doing and she's an Aquarius and I know she loves hats so Pookie <laughs> this is dedicated to you you know this is dedicated to you um, and I'll answer you once I'm done with this video <laughs> okay so some of you are traveling six of swords six of cups towards someone that you know or with someone that you know um, and it's gonna be very fun some of you are taking a vacation um, it might lead to an opportunity that will be very stable for you, something temporary, potentially becoming long-term or helping you become long-term and something in your life. But there's a lot of sun and a lot of light and a lot of cheerful energy. Um, so I'm really, really liking this energy for you guys, Aquarius. Like October feels good. Obviously, it will start with a little bit of, um, you know, some of you power struggles, some of you will have to make strong decisions, but there is liberation. I see a lot of optimism and sun and just, you know, your heart feeling happy again. It's like your, your flower, it, you, it's like a flower opening up. Speaking of uh, Zonenblumen, Sunflower, Kamania, in all languages, this flower is the flo uh, Flor de Lis, the flower of the sun. Um, it is closed at night and in the morning when the sun rises, it opens up. And it literally follow the sun all day long until it sets and then the sunflower closes up so this is a, a, a flower that symbolizes light and optimism and life um, and warmth and here i have a white flower which is the, the luna the moon the flower of the night the flower of the feminine this is very um uh, um, masculine this is very feminine this is the sun this is the the moon um, it's very inner very passive very accepting very sweet very calm um, so I really like the balanced energy of this combination um, some of you are traveling with children for a vacation or moving somewhere you know some of you are leaving a home situation to go somewhere else um, but not all of you, of course, obviously. Let's keep going. Let's see where this Knight of Pentacles is looking towards. For Aquarius for October, please, Spirit Energy. What else is coming? Ooh, the Magician. There we go. I love it that I have in readings both the Strength and the Magician, and I also had it in... I was it, I don't remember, one of the water signs, either Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio that I posted yesterday. Um, this is a strong, strong, powerful combination because this uh, represents um, black magic and this represents white magic. When I say black versus white, it's not good, ver good versus evil. Um, it's This is manipulating reality and manipulating the energies and working with them in order to... to, to uh, changed your reality into something that you want it's not necessarily evil okay um, but this requires an active will an active um, action um, 
in the strength card, this speaks about all souls in, in the spiritual energetic matter. If, guys, if you really want to uh, know how I delve into these cards, go to Tarot Masterclass. I teach Tarot. I teach Tarot, and I'm very specific in each card. Like every class is like twenty something minutes. Um, and the link is also below, by the way. The information box is full of magic. The link is below. You can check out the Tarot Master Class and learn Tarot. Anyway, so this is a very powerful combination for balanced magic, both the willful and the quiet passive one, aka you're so in tune with the will of the universe, what you want, the universal spirit want, and what the universal spirit want, naturally you also want. So there's no need of... Um, manipulating anything or forcing anything uh, it's like you naturally what you want happens because it just it resonates with the with the evolution of humanity of the energy of everything you're just in the it's like you're, you're in the right place in the right time constantly it's being allegedly lucky but you're not really lucky you worked very hard for this energy right you've mastered all the elements you learn how to work with them and now it, you've come to a place where you understand you don't need that power because it's all power is just an illusion and everything is the same. So you're naturally flowing with the energy of the universe. And you just get what you want and you want what you get. <laughs> so great combination. I like it. Very healthy combination for those of you who do energy work and awareness. Good job, guys. Um, this is also potential. You might not yet be there, but you're on the journey towards it. Like everything that is going on in your life is leading you through that. It's not necessarily just in October, but it, this could, you know, be, obviously be a long process. Um, but you're on, but this tells me you're on the right path. You're in your right direction. Um, I think you got this. This is really leading you to a very powerful situation. An opportunity will arise from this either travel or vacation or visit um, that will be very, very bountiful and very powerful. You'll be able to really manifest something that is very tangible and strong into your life. Um, that really resonates with your core, with your inner sense of, you know, what I love, what I want, what I am. This is without a doubt a very, very positive reading. Eight of Cups. Yeah, it will require to leave something. This, this process might be temporary and then you'll have to move on from it, you see? Both of them are wearing a red cloak. I feel like an opportunity will arise, a healing will be made, and then from there you'll move on to a new level in your life, to a new phase. Um, something will need to be released potentially because we have two eights. Those two will also go into the extended because we have two eights here. Actually, three eights. The strength card is eight. Something will need to be let go of in order to manifest something. You know, you have to make room for, for the right thing. If your vase is full, doesn't matter if the water is clean and beautiful, doesn't matter if they're muddy. Something else that comes along that looks for a place in your reality, it can't enter energetically because you're not giving it room. This is also, you know, leaving something behind with trust and going to the unknown because you believe in your spirit and in your power and you know that you can manifest something this is very much um <laughs> moses leading um, the hebrews out of um egypt in the biblical you know passover kind of story where he liberated the hebrews from slavery of 400 years you know he took the one and be like let my people go come with me to the unknown but it's better than what we had There's a lot of looking forward. Right here, there's a little bit of stuck energy, like inside, inner. But here, it's like a lot. Look, this one is going there. This one is going there. This one is going there. Where are we going, Aquarius? Guys, this doesn't have to be um, physical. This could be emotional, spiritual. Mm. Let's see where this is heading. Where is the Eight of Cups heading for Aquarius during October? This one wants to talk. Ooh, Page of Swords in reverse. Okay, someone is going to try and stop you. Someone is going to try and stop you with their words. With their spitefulness, potentially. 
and or someone is going to be really stalking and watching where you're going, what you're doing. Be careful not to go in a circle, aka being liberated and just returning back to the same place. This is very much this. If you were stuck in a situation and you're finding yourself liberated, don't be tempted to go back to it. Look at how you're feeling here and look at how you're feeling here. This is very strong and optimistic. This is very gloomy. And don't talk yourself out of it with, you know, um, flaky logic. This is someone that, oh, oh, this is also could be someone that constantly changes their mind, don't know what they want, and constantly act upon it or talk about it, and constantly saying different things. Go back to the justice energy, being very truthful, very powerful, and very decisive. This is like the opposite. I don't like this. I really like this. I don't like this. Don't, this is another six. Because this is the, this could be Gemini, June, 666, going away to the past, but a positive one, something that you can fix, but then either suddenly it turns back to being how it was, like it's not corrected, or you're going away from this to something different that you might have known in the past or that feels familiar, and then you might be tempted to go back to something else that you just left. Mm -mm. I don't like this. What's the advice for this Eight of Cups and Page of Swords in reverse? How do we avoid this? The Fool. Have no fear. There is no price for your freedom, Aquarius. Don't let anybody reason you into something that will make you unhappy. Listen to your heart, to your intuition. Move forward to something new with complete trust in the unknown. Complete trust in the unknown. Because it will lead you in the right direction. It might not lead you to the direction that you've always fantasized about or thought, but it will be the right direction for you. This is also a combination of a little bit immature energy. But I ask for it as an advice, so the advice is to move on without fear, without looking back, and not thinking, oh, what, I, what have I potentially lost? Things are what they are. Things end the way they begin. If something was constantly not good, it will stay not good, okay? There's no, oh, I will change, everything will be different, I'll do this and that, I'll say, uh, talk, 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 talk. This is a really t a good talker that doesn't care about the consequences. And a gossiper and a stalker. We don't like this energy. We don't like the Page of Swords in reverse. We do like the Fool because it's also open-hearted and, trust, and, trust, and, and trusting. But it's not scared. It doesn't listen to uh, coercion or emotional manipulation. This is a lot of manipulation. So this is a lot of emotional manipulation. This is, a, this is a narcissist. Me, 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 me. They will say anything to get what they want. Okay? Look away from it. The fool. The fool speaks about inner freedom and there's no fear. And it, it does things that on the paper might seem not logical or unreasonable. But they know what they're doing and it always leads them in the right direction. So be the fool. That was the advice that I asked, right? And look, the fool is looking at the magician. It's like, we got this. We know what we want. We know what we are. We have this wand. We have this wand. We have this wand. We have this wand. We know. We, here also the wand, okay? We know where we're going. We know where we're heading. Hmm. not relevant okay this is good i like this now let's look at your extended and then we'll do messages from the akashic tarot all right guys i'm really excited for the uh october 10th uh live q a um let's talk spiritual and energetic okay 
Let's talk, let's ask me questions that can, you know, that the answers can help others. Um, let's make it real, huh? Okay, these are the six, 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 and major. Okay, let's put this here. Sorry, guys. I know this is um, this is where I, this is the part where I talk to myself. <laughs> um, and and in a second, you'll understand what I'm doing. Now we're taking the chronological aspect of it. This is why I'm rearranging them. Zero, one, four. Uh, technically, the eight is supposed to be here, but I want it to be with the eights. Okay, we'll connect them later. Eleven, nineteen. Okay, and here we have three sixes and one, two, three eights. So this is the first part of your extended. We'll address the numerological aspect. Six, six, six. Yes, there's connection to the devil, but not in the way you think. I will explain in the extended. Three eights. Yes, strong karmic um, liberation, I feel, but that will take time. We'll talk about it. Um, and then the energies of the major arcana. After that, I will clear the table and I will reshuffle the cards for a brand new reading, a Celtic cross, a very ancient gypsy cross, 10 cards. Um, this can bring a completely different narrative or another point of view. Um, so it's super interesting. I don't know what it will bring, depends on the cards and what energy would want me to convey to you. And then we will finish up with messages from Arun. I'll pick Arun and I'll explain um, how it connects to you and your situation in October. Okay, my favorite part. Story time. Akashic Tarot. I'm so happy I bought these. Look how beautiful they are. Just gorgeous. Okay. I can close now. Too noisy. Oliver! <laughs> okay. Dear Akashic Tarot, Akashic Records. Bring us the most accurate benevolent message for Aquarius, my Aquarius seekers who are watching this for the month of October. Ooh, thanks. Beth birth number four. Let's read. Oliver, I need you to stop licking yourself because it's really annoying and really impolite. Look, he's licking himself. Oliver, speak. Lick yourself after I finish filming. Okay. Doggy. Birth. The sun shines upon a plain in England where um, we stand on, where stands an, I'm sorry, from the beginning. The sun shines upon a plain in England where stands an ancient henge in the distance and a grove of birch trees nearby. Upon many of the trees is carved the old Celtic ogham letter, Beth, which represents the birch tree and, stand, and stands for birth. So Beth, uh, it's also Bet in Hebrew, which also symbolizes birth, Leida, um, um, and the beginning of something. The word Bereshit is in the beginning and it starts with the letter Bet and it's also the first letter in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Um, and also Bilk, we're reading runes, right, at the end of the extended. Um, and there's Bilk, which is the same. It's another word for Beit um, in Celtic and Gaelic, which also symbolizes birth. It looks like the letter B. Sorry. <laughs> um, which represents the birch tree and stands for birth. A beautiful woman walks forward carrying a basket while two children run happily towards her. With this card, it's time for a new start, perhaps an actual birth or at least a metaphorical one. An old phase is passing away and a new one begins, but even this new beginning has its roots in your deepest histories and your past lives. Yeah, I like that it resonates with the reading. There may be some labor involved, but it's a labor that bears fruit. This card is associated with fertility, sensuality, and motherhood. 
There may be new energy in a romance, the family, or the home. You could be giving birth to a creative project too. Whatever it is, celebrate. Yay, party! Prepare for the wonderful growth and opportunities that are about to come. I'm going to let you look at this for a second. See? In case it brings up something to you. Oh, my nails, I need to fix them. I've had them for like a week and to uh, redo. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Okay. I like this. Okay, guys, I'll see you in a second. The extended links below. Um, Tarot Masterclass also link below. Um, and explanations for how to get a private reading with me with special prices for October. Um, October 10th, my live Q&A. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please, this is a great opportunity for you to support me. Press the subscribe button. And regardless, I will see you in November. Mwah. Love you guys much.